And I think here he played queen e5 and then resigned. Come on, it's not over. Stop the fight! Um, my next move, this is the, I would have done this, this, and bishop c3. Come on, it's not over. Stop the fight! And man, like, I'm not saying, like, this is the hardest, worst position I've ever seen from the black side, but this is death. This is the black plague. Come on, it's not over. Stop the fight! Um, in the words of my sensei, this is prison rape. All right, what's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to go through my games from the Music City chess tournament. It was in Tennessee. It was about, like, three weeks ago, I think. Maybe, yeah, I think it's three weeks ago. Um, and I actually have three tournaments that I need to go through from um, 2024. So this will be the first. Then I'll go through Texas. Then I'll go through Charlotte. So I would expect about one video per week. But I'm just going to start with this tournament. It's the most recent. Um, so this is my round one game against Aaron Decord. So you could say Battle of the Aarons. Da -da -da so anyway, it's round one. Um, I get this position out of the opening. I think it was a BOGO. Okay, I know it was a BOGO. <laughs> and basically, it was my first time playing this this opening. We, Me and my sensei found a really cool move order um, that got a very interesting position. And um, it was my first time playing it. Um, so one thing I learned um, after looking over this game is... Uh, the bishop should not go to e7. So basically, I went bishop e7, and I got a Maroxy. Um, so what you want to do is go d6. Yeah, so d6 is the move. And I actually thought about this in the game, but I thought this bishop was going to get trapped. I was definitely worried about this bishop. Um, so I thought like a3, and after a5, like something was going to happen to this guy. But apparently, he big chilling. There's no way to really get to him. Um, but the first time you're playing an opening, generally, you're not going to make the most at least strange ideas. I mean, it's not very risky, but yeah, if, if he ever does get b4 in, the bishop is, okay, so let's say rook b1, what would I do? Um, so a4, and now the bishop is plugged in. Um, and this is the, dif the difference between a Maroxy. With the bishop on e7, it is pretty passive. Um, the bishop on c5, it can draw more squares. Um, so that's a live and learn kind of um, idea there. So I went bishop e7, and I was like, all right, I'm getting a Maroxy. But it did seem like a good version, because the knight's not already here. I mean, the fiend shadow is kind of normal, but I pretty much got everything that is normal from the black side. So I'm just going to go ahead, and, and pretty much now we get this Maroxy hedgehog setup with no real problem for, for black. I think if the knight's on c3, it's a little bit more problematic. Um, but here, I'm completely fine. Um, so knight d7, rook c8, I'm just developing all my pieces. And basically at this point, I reach full development. And... The problem with the Maroxy, or the good thing for the Maroxy from the white side, is after full de development, it's like, what is black going to do? Like, if white does nothing, it's very hard to make progress. And that's pretty much what he did. He just started moving his pieces around. Um, now, I'm still kind of making some kind of progress. I'm going to fiend shadow this bishop. I'm going to try to get this queen to this a8 square. It's an idea that my, my sensei loves. And even queen b8, like, that's an, an idea straight from him. So queen b8, g6. Bishop g7, making some progress, and then here. Um, so knight e5 first. Um, I don't really remember. Oh, so I, mean, I guess I'm just moving towards this king. So knight e3, and this is, I think, the beginning of starting something. So a lot of times, if you're not sure what to do, just push your h-bone. Harry! Harry Potter! Harry Potter! Like, <laughs> it just makes things more interesting. And really, like, after h3, h4, g4, it's pretty much the reason why I won this game. Because after g4, I find this idea g5, and now I have carved out squares for my knight to go to f4, and then this knight can go to e5, and uh, this bishop is also um, pretty stoned in a, in a sense where it's just like, what is this guy going to do? Doesn't know how to move. <laughs> so g5, I reroute the knight. Um, really, in this position, I thought I was going to win just like pretty much no problem, but it wasn't as easy as I thought. So I take take, give him the double isolated a pawns. Um, and now I go knight d7. So the idea of knight d7 is one, we, I want to trade off some pieces. But also, with my two knights versus knight and bishop, these knights are way better. And they have clear squares they're going to go to. This knight's going to go to e5, and this knight's going to go f4. And then I'm big chilling. Um, so queen check. I did think about f6 a bit, but I thought, okay, maybe this pawn could get weak. I don't want to commit. So I was like, all right, I'll just go king g8, no problem. Um, and then he cannot penetrate with queen f6 because the knight covers that square. But that is an idea that I definitely want to keep in mind. 
So a5, um, take, I, I was thinking about a lot of things here. Um, yeah, queen c7 was another really big consideration and trying to go to c5. And his king is weak, kind of, so I was like, all right, maybe I keep the queens. But then I was like, all right, let me just be up upon and chill. Now, very interesting idea here is right now d6 is loose. Um, so I played knight takes b8. Um, but apparently what's like even better is just going rook takes b8. And after this, and knight c5, I mean, let's say, for example, I mean, I looked at this variation. So this is one idea. And then apparently this, this knight is a god and this knight is a god. Like, even though he has this pass pawn, like, my pieces have all the activity. Um, actually, let me say rook d1, like, if he tries to trade. Ah, so I can go rook b8. And basically, the rook is going to come to the second or it's going to cause terror. Um, the other move I want to look at, I guess he's going to transpose rook d1. I can go ahead and just take, take, and then put that rook on... I'll probably actually rook check first and then rook b2. My knight's going to come in and uh, even if I lose these pawns, it's not really a problem because I think he's going to lose material. But this is why I tried to avoid, I, I didn't go for this variation is I saw myself, okay, actually, he doesn't can't take this, but I saw myself against this pass pawn and I didn't see any guaranteed way of actually winning material here. I and mean, with only two pieces, like in theory, he could defend. Um, and then if I don't win anything, then I could 100% lose. That's why here I was like, right, let me just keep the material. So knight takes b8, um, c5. Um, so he's just trying to force everything off. Um, and this is where I went um, knight f4. So once again, this idea is apparently just good for good for uh, black. Um, so after knight rook takes pawn, knight d5, rook takes pawn, um, either rook d3 or rook d2. And then the other knight comes to f4 and then I, I mean, I, this this past pawn, I've been traumatized by so many times, so I didn't want to mess with this, but apparently it's just okay. Um, so here, sorry, so I didn't go for this variation. I went knight f4, I mean, obviously threatening knight e2 check, <laughs> grand master tactics. So bishop f1, d5, and this is actually where I kind of gave away some of the advantage, and the really important idea for him here is to go knight g2. And basically trade away my good piece um and this bishop actually is starting to get some life it's on a way better diagonal um and this is kind of weird because it's like oh free pawn but there unfortunately if i go knight f2 the knight is trapped and if i go knight f4 my pawn structure is ruined and my grip on the king side is also ruined so that was the equalizing line for white here um but he instead went for knight f5 um and then here it's just don't let anything silly happen and keep moving forward. So rook c7, king h2, king f8, rook uh, d4, um, and then here knight c6. And now I'm starting to push forward. And this is where, this is kind of like a, a standstill moment where basically the tournament before this, I had a lot of good positions, but I just for some reason I couldn't finish. I couldn't find the knockouts to finish my opponents. Um, and the takeaway I got from that, and which you guys might see later on next week, is at some point you just got to go you just got to push your pieces push forward and look for that knockout just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there if you put pressure you move forward um the knockouts will be the openings will be there so i was like all right let me just push the pawn so here f6 i'm trying to basically get my knight to e5 um and that's exactly what i did now i'll be honest i did not see knight takes h4 um but i was really looking at the exchange stack either here or here um, but either way, I was like, all right, I should be just cruising here. Um, I think this one is more interesting with him trying to take this pawn. But, oh, yeah, I have knight takes f3. I always have knight takes f3, so there's, there's really nothing there. So he went knight takes h4, and though I didn't see it, I mean, his position is pretty much hanging on by a string. Um, so here, I just went rook h7. Um, apparently, the better move is to just keep going and ignore it. Because the funny thing is, his knight cannot move. Because if it moves, then knight takes f3 is a threat, is a problem again. So he's kind of just confined to this, and I'm just going to basically roll on. So once again, the most direct way to win is just doing what you're doing. <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing good. Just keep going. Um, but okay, I went rook h7. He takes here. And now I am up a piece, but the pieces, the coordination, maybe not the best. Um, so he goes rook d6. King e7, don't want to lose this pawn. Okay, another very th important thing to, to know here is if black loses too many pawns, he's probably, has a, white has a very good chance of drawing. 
because if he just like gets rook versus rook and knight, that is a draw. And three, five, two, four, I am already down upon. So if he gets to me, and not only down upon, I'm pretty much losing these two. So this is all I got left. Um, so I was very wary not to lose too many pawns here. So this take here, moving with tempo. Don't give him time. And this is an like, all right. Let me just reroute. Nothing's really happening over here. I, I, so a very common principle is to trade when you're winning. Now the problem is if I take here, okay. I mean, computer says it's still 100% fine, but I would say he is getting 100% closer to drawing in this position. Now I should have enough over here, but didn't want to risk it and my knights were so powerful and i wasn't really worried about the bishop so here take rook here so now i'm really starting to, to to have mating ideas and winning material ideas against this king so a4 check here knight here this and basically here we kept playing um i actually ended up checkmating him with the, the rook and two knights Um, but we were low at time, so I didn't notate. Um, but basically, I think I won this pawn, and then I went ahead and made it in with the, the, the two knights and rook versus the king. Um, so solid start so far to the tournament. Um, opening was, so equalized, no problem. But to win against a very strong player, that is the hard part. Um, the mistake he made was really letting, was going g4, letting these knights come in and kind of terrorize him. Um, but then the good thing was, at the end, I just push through just like okay to win just be straightforward and find the winning plan um, so that's round one next i'll go on to round two all right so this is my round two against this guy mauricio sana um i think he's like 2100 uh, the last guy was like 2100 too um so this game i had my secret super secret super effective variation against e5 and this 95 idea is new to me um but here, I just want queen g3. Now, I think the best way for black to play is knight h5. But after this and this, I think there's bishop g5. And we're chilling. What else can he do? Yeah, I mean, he can go g6. But he's making some big holes in his king. Um, and then this was always... I didn't... I wasn't too panicked about this. If I can start getting some pawns going over here, like, it should be a hard time for, uh, for black. So... That's the proper way to play, but white's still pretty happy here. Um, so he goes knight g6. Um, so first off, what's his threat? I mean, computer's serial killer just wants to go h4. So why can't he take any four? Yeah, something's going to happen with his coordination. Okay, it, it's a strange. Like, even this doesn't seem like plus two, plus one. So, I mean, you just make the simple move, f3. And here he went bishop c5. Um... So this is another very important principle. If you can get someone in an opening they don't know um, with pressure and you're playing fast and you're playing confident, um, they really start panicking. They start being like, I don't know what to do. Um, they start making moves. And this is something that I've definitely done. They make moves when they look back and they're like, why did I even do that? I can't believe I made that move. Um, so basically, he goes bishop c5, which isn't the best idea because he's, waste, he's low key wasting time. He moved the bishop twice. And I have an attack coming. So if you waste time when you're being attacked, um, their attack's gonna get better and better. And now we went bishop d6, so I got another move. Um, so bunch of ideas here. I went for queen f2. Um, during the game, I was like, or maybe queen e1 is better. Um, the reason why queen f2 I was a little bit sus about is if I go f4, maybe he can go knight g4 and kind of post up um, with tempo. Um, but queen f2 is fine, h5 push him back um and he, yeah, we're gonna get an alert real quick so here um so i was thinking about a lot of moves here um and then once again this i i had the same realization round two as i did from the, the last tournament like in good positions you just gotta go like just do the most direct idea and here i went for h6 and he cannot go g6 here um which would lock up the attack but he would just lose material after bishop g5 knight d7 and knight d5 um i was i, I was li literally thinking he might just sack the queen and try to play this but i mean good luck being down a queen um so here he has to go knight g6 and here i went queen h2 um 
basically, I'm going to take on G7. I'm going to use this H file, and he's going to be in trouble. Um, yeah, I don't mean, you could do that, but so Queen E5 was another move. But I, my my idea was, my idea was I would just go F4. Yeah, so if he sacks the piece, I was like, all right, I'm up a piece, I'm fine. Um, if he goes back, now it looks a little bit loose, but the big thing is there's there's a pretty much mate looming over here, and after something like this, like knight d5 should be pretty much game over. Um, so I mean, I mean, if you, actually, I mean, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see how it kind of ends. So queen h2, he goes queen f8, take on g7 here, g5, push him back, move forward. Now I'm threatening c7, but. I don't really want to win c7. I want to win over here. Like, if he went c6, I mean, I, I would have honestly taken the exchange, or I guess the rook in this case. But he went bishop b6, and uh, yeah, this guy, this is the bad employee. This is the, the bishop. He went here, 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 and then here. So you give me five moves to push pawns and, and try to checkmate you, man, good luck. So knight g3, this knight's coming into here or here, and then here or here. Um, he goes rook d8, <laughs> knight f5, and I think here he played queen e5 and then resigned. Um, my next move, this is the I would have done this, this, and bishop c3, and man, like I'm not saying like this is the hardest, worst position I've ever seen from the black side, but this is death. This is the black plague. Um, in the words of my sensei, this is prison rape. This is like, man, you are stuck. Yeah, I mean, this uh, pretty much like no way to not get mated in like two moves here. And I mean, if you just aesthetically look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The only guy chilling at home is the bishop on f1, but we don't need him. He's like the backup quarterback. One day, if I mean, basically we're up by 30 in the fourth quarter. Like he can, he can definitely chill on the bench. But yeah, this opening is fire. I'm not gonna uh, until I make GM. I'm really not gonna try to give it out. Um, but one thing, cool thing about this opening is nobody plays it. Um, e4, e5, and honestly, if I can get some more wins in this, I think I'm like five and zero or something. Um, this 100% will become the Aaron variation, which is pretty cool. That's uh, the suggestion from my sensei. So round two, um, very nice game, very beautiful game. 2-0 in the tournament, and now we're going to go on to round three. All right, so round three, I'm playing WGM Sabina Foyser. I think she was U.S. champion at some point, um, U.S. women's champion. <laughs> and um, this is actually the most accurate game that we played. I think it was 96 and 97% accuracy. Um, but it also was the most boring game <laughs> by far. far. Now, I was trying to follow the script from a Magnus Hikaru game that was like super, super fire. Um, and it went something like this, queen c2, knight takes c3, knight g5, knight e4, and the very, there's two lines here. There's knight takes and then knight c6. And I think black is, um, I mean, chilling, but scary. Um, and there's bishop takes e4, take queen takes, and there's this exchange stack. Now, I wasn't really excited to go into this, but <laughs> I didn't know if she knew or not. Um, but she just went knight takes pretty much immediately too. So after this, like we get the classic like bogo position. Um, and I was thinking about going like d6 and trying to get a dutch. Um, problem here is knight g5. Like always watch out for knight g5 in these positions. Um, and I could go knight d7, but I was trying to do something different. I was like, how am I going to win this if I go like all these moves? Um, and this is kind of like the first game of the tournament where we kind of got the prep and This is one of those things where it's like if you draw with black against a good player or a solid player Like it's not a bad result But it is kind of annoying having like no winning chances and no losing chances um, So this is where we started thinking like all right, what openings can we work on so that even against a solid super solid like people who make no weaknesses like how can I get something out of it um, so anyway, so I went a5 and I had this cool idea, <laughs> kind of cool, but I don't know if it's the greatest, but a4 and, um, rook a5. And I was like, all right, maybe I can swing the rook, try to get some attack over here at some point f5 at the right time. Um, but she went b4, which I guess is the best move. Uh, so take, take knight c6, rook a1, um, 
Yeah, D5, I was really thinking about, like, this was, I mean, her path to, to try to win, but also my path to try to get some kind of position. But she was like, nope, I'm just going to trade off. Um, and then here, there's a very interesting idea. Um, knight E5. And the variation that I calculated here was knight E5. So basically, knight E5, take on G2. Hey, buddy. Okay, don't go crazy. Um, I'm gonna try to yeah. So so knight e5, take on g2, take on d7, queen d8, knight takes f8, bishop h3, um, and then I was I was definitely kind of sketched out in this position. Like I'm gonna have two pieces for a rook, but the coordination is bad and she's got pawns. Um, but once again, I don't even think she she just like immediately went rook d1, um, and then after this like. It's just zeros. Like, I was hoping for something, some kind of, like... I was really thinking about Magnus Carlsen in, in this position. Like, how would Magnus try to win this? Like, because this is kind of his bread and butter. Um, but, nah, Bishop G2 here, take, here. And basically after this, it's like... I was thinking about E5, D5, Knight A5, but... I mean, I knew I'm not going to just win this pawn. And um, at some point, maybe it's dangerous. You could always go C5, too. I can't really do anything. Um... So, we she went queen c3, queen f5, trying to sneak, no, 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 this is d5. So I, I went h5, I was like, all right, maybe something will happen. But nah, she was just like, all right, let's trade. I'm 100% fine. Well, she was like, I'm 100% fine with not losing here. Rook a8, and here, this, and I offered a draw, and honestly, I wasn't sure she heard it. So I was like, oh man, like if she doesn't hear it, I guess we just keep going. Um, I wish there was like a button you could press or something where it can be alert them like hey I offered a draw because um, I'll be like make a move and be like draw and I guess she kind of made eye contact but not really not enough to like acknowledge like okay he offered a draw and I was like all right well if not we'll just sit here but she was like about to move and then she was like I accept your draw and I was like all right bet um, after, after she was we were talking about some variation real quick um, but I mean, as you can see, there's a million moves and all of them are pretty much zeros. So, I mean, not a bad result drawing with black, no problem, no sweat. Um, but I, w I did wish there was a little bit more spice in this food. This is like eating white rice and peas. Like I was looking for some chicken tikka <laughs> or some biryani, you know? Um, but not today. Um, another thing that I should have known is she's married to Grandmaster Elshan Mordiabadi and he, I played him about six months ago. And she did some very similar ideas. Um, so I should I don't know if she prepped with him before the game, but um, if she did, like that's probably a big reason why there was pretty much no surprises in the opening and she was 100% just chilling the whole time. So yeah, that's the, that's round three. So I'm two and a half out of three at this point and on to round four. All right, so this is my round four game against Grandmaster Mikhail Antipov. I think he's like 2,600 feet A, so like 2,650 USCF. Very, very strong player. Um, and y'all definitely buckle up for this game. This was a Wild West, like a, a shootout, crazy game. yee um, So it started out, we're going to start out in this position. Basically, it was a Rosalimo, one of these really crazy lines. Once again, got the prep got the idea, but then I did some like finessing. So he goes d5, I go bishop takes, pretty much the only move, but makes sense. You want your bishop, you don't want a pawn in front of your bishop, and uh, you want your pieces as active as possible. And now there's still a lot of threats on f7 and take on e5. This take check, king h1 is not a problem um, because the computer is kind of stuck. All right, there we go. So. I'll just show you guys, for example, here, here, and if you want to dare take the last pawn, bishop takes, even though I'm down two pawns, like, this pressure is insane, he hasn't castled, and I'm going to win at least one pawn back with this pawn on e5, or something along those lines. So, um, you can't take the pawns here, um, so he went um, knight f6, and here I found this idea, <laughs> only idea, queen a4 check, bishop d7, and then bishop takes f7. Now, what actually was the better variation is queen c4. Um, 
And what I didn't like about it, which I guess maybe is kind of silly, and also looking back at what happened in the game, this was a 100% better version. I thought he would go queen e7, and then I was going to take on f7 here. Remember, if he takes, then I take his bishop, and everything kind of falls apart. And after king d8 and f takes e5, I thought, okay, maybe he can get some counterplay here. His king is actually pretty safe. Um, but yeah, this is 100% a better version of the game. Because um, the game's going to be very similar. But okay, I went for bishop takes f7 check first, um, king e7, and then queen b3. I wanted to go queen c4. This is my original plan. But then I got spooked about rook c8. And I mean, I guess I'm... Okay, not, not immediately. I mean, apparently, apparently this is just fine. Um, if knight takes e4... Yeah, I guess I take on e5, and I have this threat of take on d4. For some I mean, it's very similar to the game, but I just didn't like the fact that it gets rook c8 with tempo. Um, so that was, a, I guess, a misevaluation on my part. So I went take, take, and queen b3. And also, I wanted to threaten queen takes b7 in some lines um, just to move with tempo. Um, but he went rook f8, take on e5. Knight takes e4, and I'm like, all right, his king's in the middle. At some point, it's going to be too much. I'm going to checkmate him. That was not the case. So e6 here, king h1. I think king h1 is a very, very nice. Actually, only move, crazy. Everything else loses. But basically, now his big threat is pawn push, pawn push. Um, and this pawn is going to be really dangerous. Um, so I just went ahead and played king h1 first. Actually, let me show you this cool variation. So queen takes, king h1. There is actually queen g1. And this would have been a very sad way. To have the game end um so king h1 first prophylactic he goes d3 another i think very good move knight d2 so now i want to start getting rid of his active pieces and then at some point this king on e7 and i'm up a pawn i believe yeah so i'm up a pawn like then i should be good um I, yeah i was i was wondering if he would do this um i was pretty fine with it yeah some idea of like 94 um, and this is not a free piece because I have this check. This check actually be pretty close to game over. Um, so I was 100% fine sacking the exchange here because I got my pieces out. I have exchange in pawn, and now his king would be very sus in the le in, in the least. Um, so knight g5, um, queen c4. Now here I completely missed this idea of rook f5. Um, I don't know why I missed this. Rook f5 is a super strong move because right now basically his next move is he wants to go queen to d5 here but rook f5 prevents that it hits the bishop and it threatens to sack the exchange something that i was already ready to do um and here he would actually have some problems after after rook f5 like one cool variation is take take sorry b6 take take and then i can go knight f3 um and he cannot take here because i threatened to go bishop takes g5 and win the queen and everything kind of falls apart for him after that um so I go queen c4. Basically, I'm trying to get my queen over here to defend against the onslaught and then also try to trade off some pieces. Um, so he goes queen d5, and uh, I did not want to go into this endgame. Like, maybe it's the, the most practical idea. Once again, take, take, and rook f5 is the idea. I didn't see rook f5 at all for some reason. Um, so I went ahead and went queen to g4. Um, I mean, I think it makes sense. So he took, took, here, here. And then b4. B4, I think, was a very, actually, gangster move. Um, it was very, very close to almost winning. So take, take. And if he goes, like, anything but rook f8, if he goes, like, bishop d6, now I can consolidate. I can take on g7 with check. Um, and then I can go bishop b2. Man, computer is being laggy today. Um, or actually, I guess laggy fourth round. <laughs> Fifth round is going to break for sure. Um, so bishop d6, now I can take here and... Um, his coordination is definitely kind of messed up, um, and my pieces come out. So I thought b4, beautiful move. Um, I saw his next move, rook f8. Rook f8. So let's go back a couple moves, guys. Yeah, so here, here, this. So rook f8, and then I have the miraculous knight e3. Somehow there's no mate on rook f1 or queen g2. And I think if bishop takes e3, I'm like, I'm actually doing really well. Because after bishop takes, bishop takes, his king actually ends up being more weak. And his, a lot of his dark squares are weak. Like g7, um, bishop c5 check. Come on, buddy. We're almost there. We've got one more game after this. So bishop takes e3, 
bishop takes you have queen takes g7 as a threat and also bishop c5 check yeah so here we go so take here here and this check and then rookie one and i was like all right um i should be okay here i would think so but he finds a really good move queen to e5 sacking a piece but not actually sacking a piece and he and and he made this move when i have like a minute left on the clock and i'm like i didn't look at queen e5 at all so basically i have a minute to deal with this brilliancy move um and after thinking and trying to figure out like i really wanted to go like queen d1 uh sorry not here i was gonna go oh sorry take on c5 take and queen d1 and if this bishop could jump over this knight i'd have bishop g5 check and win the queen but i can't do that <laughs> so 93 queen e5 i just take take and then i gotta sacrifice it back bishop b2 so he takes i go rookie one trying to put some pressure on this king on e7 the guy who pretty much lived his whole life in the in the wild open like that guy was raised on the streets and uh he was pretty much fine with it i guess He's like he, he turned into a rapper is what i would say he called she belongs to the streets and uh he made the most of his life so rook d1 so here in this position the number one thing is this pawn i cannot let this pawn get too far and this is another theme i think of the tournament and my my tra my trauma from chess like these <laughs> these past pawns they get too far you're in trouble and i 100 percent wasn't gonna let that happen so rook d1 here now i have to get rid of some more trauma so i went h3 just to make sure there's no back rank ideas after cleaning kind of these two problems now i can start pressing forward now what was the win for him here <laughs> yeah g5 i don't know queen c3 okay makes some sense to defend the pawn he went rook d8 um to queen g3 check here and this is a very very important move only move that isn't just game over knight f5 come on so knight f5 so originally my idea was knight c4 but the problem here is he goes queen c2 and now this knight check doesn't really do anything um and he can actually just sack the the rook and then i'm dead back here but knight f5 is very important because now if he tries queen c2 um i have knight e7 check and now his king has to come to the open and then after take here he he has to sacrifice the queen otherwise he's he's just dead lost and uh, i take everything with check um so here queen e2 rookie one and here he takes i thought he might try to milk it a little bit more um bishop takes g2 is a move i was looking at um my plan in the game was king h2 but apparently king g okay, yeah, actually, both of them are fine and actually after here i was like maybe i'm winning because i don't know how he makes progress and I, I might just win a piece here and he still has all these problems with 97 check at the back so he, he just goes ahead and um he just sacks the queen for the rook take and here i'm like okay i think i might be winning so check 93 to stop the queen um i think i went queen e5 check which is actually is a, is a slight inaccuracy so 93 the difference is after this this and here i can start cleaning all these pawns with check um but when i go queen check first on e5 um his king actually makes it to the sanctuary he makes it to his uh his five star hotel <laughs> So knight e3, sorry, king b8. So queen e5 check, king here, and now knight e3. And now the problem is after this, this, and here, um, there's no like real, there's there's no back rank mate. Um, and now I can't, if his king is on b8, I can try to take this pawn with check because his king can't hide in the corner. It has to come out. But now I go queen takes g7. Um, funny or interesting variation is he can actually just go ahead and go into this end game it is a draw um yeah king b8 i actually thought that i would be faster but yeah he's, he's fast enough this i think he can take here take and then he just pushes the pawns and unfortunately my h my king is actually in the way of glory so here i think i go king g5 so there's no check or anything and then just push push and after push it would just peter out to a draw we both queen and i don't have any checks that win his queen or anything so that was a draw um i think he was also still trying to give me chances to mess up um so he played a5 
queen check and then here I play king g3 trying to get the king no, king out of there take he takes here and then here I had a slight chance to think do I try to win with h4 the problem is his pawn is actually very dangerous and I don't want to mess around with it and at this point we had a long battle I think we both got low on time we both had our crazy moments I was like, all right, let me just take the draw against the 2600. So this draw and the last draw are very, very different. The last draw, there was like nothing going on the whole time. It's kind of a snooze fest. This draw was like a war. This is like, we both went to battle. We both had our moments. We both went crazy. We both almost lost. We both almost won everything. We had our really ingenious moves. Um, so overall, definitely okay with the result of drawing here. Um, so now I am three out of four. I'm pretty much almost leaving the tournament. I think there's there was two, three and a halfs at this point. Um, and uh, we'll go into the final round. All right, guys. So this is my last round game against international master Ron Barnett. If you want, you can start queuing the, uh, the sad violins. <laughs> um, so basically, if I win this game, I get first place in the tournament. I'm even showing you guys the opening. There you go. Okay, so here, here, and this is actually where my teacher brought up a really good point. Um, since he never played knight of six, I can actually just go g4 straight here, which would have been way more efficient. Um, and it's a very important idea. Like when you're playing, when you're going to do something different, try to take advantage of it. Um, I kind of try to just copy paste and do what I always do. Um, and that was, I mean, it was still good, but g4 would have just been like way better. So basically I get this position. And okay, it does kind of look like a bluff, um, but at this point he's down like 40 minutes on the clock. Um, I've been walking around already thinking about what I'm going to do. My $1,000 check that I'm about to win. Um, and then he goes F5, and here I'm like, all right, it's game over. So I go bishop g5, um, take on F3, and this is where, man, this is where I saw this variation. I knew it was winning. Um, I just missed that after here, I can just do this and he, sorry, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and then take on e5. And even though he can take this on e2, I can honestly just take the rook, but there's also just bishop takes e2, like everything is winning here. Um, and I just missed this idea of d takes e5 for God knows what reason. Um, so... That was like, that was, there was the knockout. That was like, I don't know why I didn't go knight d5. It's like, I had him on death. Basically at this point I was like, all right, let me not take any risk. I can do whatever I want. Like, I'm just going to win this game. Easy peasy, right? So I went knight g1. And basically it's like in a fight, if I had him right in front of me and he's like cowering and I'm about to punch him. And then he, I was like, no, 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 I won't punch you. Let's just keep going. No, no, no rush about this. And it's just like, yo, just finish the game. Like, that was the really silly part about this game. Even here, I still have this idea of bishop takes, bishop takes, take on e5, bishop takes, knight takes f3. And now, I mean, his position is busted. Like, his king's naked. All these pieces are going to come off. I was thinking bishop g7. So h6, bishop h8. And then basically here, I can take everything. And this would have been a way better version of the game you'll see in the game this is very similar to what happened <coughs> but i let him keep all his hunt in the, in the center um so uh knight g1 knight f6 i go h6 locking up my attack another, another like just follow the principles the principles are good and once again i okay, i showed you guys that so h6 here uh H7 check would have been very interesting too. This, to, and I just have this idea again. Remember, when I take here, you can never take back with the pawn because the queen goes. Um, so here, and this would have been pretty much just lights out, like just beautiful position. It's just completely busted. But I was being really nice. Just also low key, I feel like God was on his side <laughs> in the most weird way. But H7 check, locking it up. In my head, I was like, all right, in the end game, this pawn is going to be so important because I can always threaten a queen. But that bishop just dominates the diagonal. 
Um, and then here I, I was like, all right, how else can I help this guy? Like, what else can I do to help him get a better position? And I was like, all right, let me open up his rook for him. That would make a lot of sense. Like this. Um, and then here, um, I think this is where he offered a draw. No, 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 not here. Actually, yeah, this is where he offered a draw. And basically, if I draw, like, okay, I'll win, I'll win some money, I'll gain some rating, but I won't win the tournament. Um, and if I, if I, I think if he takes, if he gets a draw, then he basically clinches first place. So I couldn't really take the draw here. There's actually a really cool variation here. Knight takes f3, um, take rook f1. Definitely some serial killer type thing where it's like it's not even obvious that I'm winning here. I'm down a piece, three, four, with basically no pawns for it. Um, but his king is just in la la land. Is the best way to put it. Yeah. So after here, I would go bishop takes d5. I think uh, end up. So I mean, basically, he's getting he's getting touched from all sides. Yeah, king. Sorry, king g7. Queen takes, rook takes. Where is the win? <clears throat> and then just rook takes d5. I mean, the bishop ain't doing anything. But okay, one check. I think rook f7 is no, no, no. What am I doing? Those are all they're just like the game. I'm trying to give him all the winning moves. Wait, what? Oh, so here, oh, queen b4 check. That's the key. That way there's no queen trade idea. So queen check, and then after king f7, I can just take here, and I'm going to win. Oh, bishop b6? No, bishop b6, I'm going to win the queen. Basically, I'm going to win heavy material very soon, and all his, all his pawns in the middle <coughs> kind of fell apart. So yeah, this knight was basically useless. I should have, and I, I'm playing a position where I want to sacrifice pieces. So wouldn't it make sense to try to sacrifice pieces? Just to get your pieces in. So that would, I mean, once again, very hard to see. Um, but in my mentally, like, that was really what killed me this, this game. Like, and then I, I realized I can't even take this pawn. Or I can't take here and take the pawn. So take here, he takes a check. I think my idea was what? Bishop takes d5 check? I think he just goes queen takes, and I don't even know what I was thinking, I'm going to be honest. Even rook takes a2, I think I have nothing, instead of rook a6. Yeah, even here, there's, there's there's nothing there. So I don't know what I was thinking. Basically, God was like, you're going to let Burnett win, and I was like, all right, I guess I'll let him win. And then here, he doesn't even take. He just chills. There's nothing here, and then even at the end, <laughs> I mean, I tried something, but after this, like the saddest part is this is just mate back here. So it's not even anything I can do. So definitely not the not the way to finish the tournament, especially after playing so well, drawing Grandmaster, smashing my first two opponents, and okay, the draw is the draw. Um, but yeah, this game was this game definitely haunted me for a bit. Um, I was like, man, I had him on death's door. I was up like an hour on the clock. Like, what? Where did this all happen? And this is something that happens, I think, in life and in chess. Like, positions go from good to bad so fast. Like, and then you think about it later and you're like, yo, that was just a blur. Like, where did it go wrong? What did I do wrong? And it's just like an accumulation of small mistakes that, and then all of a sudden, then things just blow up in your face. Uh, story of my life, not gonna lie. So, um, hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoy the games. Like, definitely some entertaining games. Even the loss was um, pretty much crazy. Um, the one game that wasn't entertaining, like, it is what it is. It's gonna happen. But... Yeah, so I finished with three out of five. I don't think I won any money. I think I gained like two, three points despite losing the last round. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the Music Midtown recap. I will have pretty much one per week the next couple of weeks. <coughs> and I won't be, com be competing for a sec. So hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.